So let's go on to Spice Tree. Happy to address other questions as we go along. Thank um, you very much. Uh, keep us moving through. We've got some Spice Tree there. Now, word on the grapevine with Spice Tree is you broke some rules. Well, we did not knowingly break rules. <laughs> And we disagreed that those rules actually existed, um, but we were not uh, 16, 17 years ago, uh, we did not have the resources to battle the Scotch Whiskey Association in, in, in court. So we decided to abide. Abide. I've well, said, no, so no, maybe not so much abide, but roll, you know, step back. <laughs> so so I've, I've teased the fact but not explained what happened. Can you help us understand, given, yeah, given sure. it's called the spice tree? The spice tree, yeah. So what you're going to get here, and I'm going to answer that question, is you see darker color. And that's a point for, for me to say that all of our Scotch whiskies at Compass Box are natural color. Most Scotch whiskies, even the most famous single malts, are colored with something called spirit caramel to make them look darker. That's been traditional in the, in the industry going back to the 19th century. We just don't do it because we, and, and we and other progressive producers, we eschew caramel coloring because we just think it's not necessary. It's, um, whiskey's a natural product, you know, a, you know, barley you know, or, or a grain of some sort and water and yeast and then aged milk, you know, and that's, that's why muck it up with color. But this color is noticeably darker and that's because of the types of casks it's aged in. We take single malts from uh, several, several different distilleries, three, four different distilleries, and, and it's all on the website. And we take them when they're aged about 10 years in American oak barrels. We blend them together and then we age most of them. We put 80% or so of this big blend back into casks made of heavy toasted French oak, the kind of oak that's made for winemakers. We've been doing this for years. And then we leave it in there for another two or three years. And what it does is it gives not just that, that darker color, but it gives these lovely spice notes, cardamom, clove in particular, um, cinnamon. And especially when you add water to it, that really starts to bring out the spicy notes in, in spice tree. You add your water and give it about 30 seconds or 45 seconds for the water and the whiskey to kind of um, come together and find an equilibrium. And then you start pulling out more of the baking spice notes. If you like to bake and you like, I know it's apple season is a, um, is, is, is begun. And once the weather turns back to normal autumn or autumnal weather and you're baking your tart tatin, you know, your classic French tart tatin, this is the whiskey you drink with it. This is the whiskey you drink with it. Just utterly accents the apple character and the spice character and the caramel character of tart tatin. This is the perfect complement to tart tatin. And it's because it's aging that French oak. Um, not because it's French and Tartatana is French, it has nothing to do with it. It's just their flavors that each of these represent or, you know, bring, have in them. We originally aged the casks of what became Spice Tree all those years ago with casks that had inserts in them. I put more popular in the wine industry back then, 20 years ago than today, but it still exists. Some winemakers, long story short, take flat oak staves. Rather than re re buying a new cask, they, they rejuvenate their old cask by sticking fresh toasted, dried and toasted oak staves into their into their casks. And it, you have great results. And so I brought some of these over from, from France many years ago, had our coopers in Scotland line the insides of used whiskey barrels with these beautiful, heavy toasted French oak staves. And we would put whiskey in there for one or two or three years. And it came out like, like this with all this, 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 this spice character, lovely. And the Scotch Whiskey Association said, that's not traditional. You must, you know, you, inserts are not traditional. You have to use traditional practices by our interpretation of the law. I'm gonna leave the story kind of there rather than delve more into the details. And I know Scott, you're a lawyer, I understand. So you're gonna to wanna to know all about this. We'll talk about more. But well, you found story. a solution. But we found a solution. So now we use the same exact French oak staves that we lie on the insides of the barrel. Now our coopers form like a, 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 a second skin, if you will, um, on the heads of our barrels with the exact same oak and they bevel it so it fits neatly on the casks and we get the same kind of character. So much ado about nothing, but uh, at least from the SWA side and you end up with this fabulous liquid. I think it's fabulous, yeah. Particularly with Tartan too. Particularly with Tartan. <laughs> Actually, you know, and, and there's another thing, that, and someone's going to ask this question, and maybe they already have. What about cocktails and good whiskeys like these? I mean, these are not cheap whiskeys. Um, 
and people don't think necessarily of cocktails and malt whiskeys in particular, but we've been doing, again, any, you can do it any way you like. If you're respecting the whiskey and you're asking someone to make a cocktail with a Scotch whiskey like this that allows the flavor of the whiskey to come shine through and it's balanced in a, in a, in a, in a in a way with real integrity to make a really compelling drink, that's absolutely fine. You can make gorgeous Rob Roy's with this. You can make gorgeous, um, oh, like a Boulevardier, use, use Scotch whiskey. There's beautiful, tall, there's sort of elegant, sort of boozy drinks that people drinking martini glasses are really nice with, with a, with a Scotch whiskey like that, I think.